So in the fall of this school year, I got an email from Julie Stern asking me if I would like to join the first cohort for her new course that she and her team designed called Learning Transfer Endorsed Educator. So in this video, I would like to talk about some of the key learnings I gained through the course and how I used what I learned to design and ultimately implement a STEM project at my school. Check out this video to learn more about the project. But before we start, I would like to mention that I am not an expert and I am fairly new to this approach. Um, any feedback in the comments below uh, that you might have will greatly be appreciated. So let's get started. The Learning Transfer Mental Model is one tool we can use as educators to help design the education our students need. Uh, this is a tool that focuses on underlining patterns, structures, and most importantly, fundamental elements called concepts that help us to organize and categorize our world. Any topic or discipline or any task or project for that matter uh, contains concepts that are interconnected with one another, like a network. This model helps us to better retain information, improve our skills, and transfer what we learn to new situations. This links to the way our brains work best. I love the pile of papers uh, metaphor Julie uses to describe this. Here we have a stack of papers with information on it, uh, but it's hard for our brains to retain and recall all this information without first organizing the information into folders, or in our case within this model, organizing ideas into concepts. There are different phases within a, um, the mental model that are illustrated within a storyboard. A storyboard highlights the different levels of learning where students acquire understanding of concepts, connect concepts, and ultimately transfer their learning to new situations. The first phase is acquire, where the most important concepts are identified and where the students acquire understanding of the concepts by learning about the shared attributes of each of the concepts through examples. In my storyboard, uh, students took a look at numerous examples to acquire the understanding and meaning of each individual concept. They got to identify what attributes made up the um, concepts of structure, function, and senses. So for structure, for example, students got to take a look at uh, the structures of animals and plants. For this phase, I included two acquire strategies, the SEEI model and the Freyer model. The SEEI model um, is a graphic organizer that is divided into four sections where students write down the definition of the concept, uh, its attributes, examples of the concepts, as well as non-examples. The Freyer model also has four sections. State is where you state the concept in a sentence or two. Elaborate is where students describe the concept in greater detail through paraphrasing. Exemplify is where students identify concrete examples to demonstrate the meaning of the concept. And illustrate is a picture or a diagram that students draw that represents the concept or a picture with a metaphor or an analogy. Next is the connect phase where uh, we have students think about the relationship between the different concepts through a conceptual question. Here's the question I developed for my storyboard. How do our structures influence function and our senses? Instead of only seeing these concepts as separate entities, um, like we did in the acquire phase, students will also uh, make connections between concepts. This is how our schema is built, organizing information into categories and learning about the relationships between them that creates and strengthens neural pathways in the brain. The first context I included in this phase were examples that included the relationship between structure and function uh, within animals and plants. For example, students could take a look at burrs, um, a seed that contains hooks that catch on the fur of passing animals to promote seed dispersal for the plant, as well as a protective mechanism from herbivores. This example shows the crucial relationship between the plant's structure and its function. So the second context uh, for this phase included the concepts working together within our own bodies, the human ear. Students will learn how the ear's uh, structure affects its function, how the information it captures is processed through its brain. Students would need to answer the following question. What is the relationship between the structure of an ear, its function, and our sense of hearing in this context? This then led to the third context, uh, but this time within the context of an animal, a bat's ability to use echolocation. 
The structure of the bat's voice box allows it to contract uh, to create echolocation sounds that are used to locate prey, which is the voice box function. The structure of the ears, specifically the inner part of the ear, contains sensory receptors that receive information, sends it to the brain that is then processed. To help students make connections and think about the relationships between the concepts within these contexts, uh, I included the BOLT strategy. It's a tool that helps students to organize ideas into a visual representation. The B is for brainstorming a list of concepts related to a topic. O is the organization of these ideas. L is for the linking of the concepts uh, using a line that describes that relationship between them. And T is for transfer, um, thinking about new contexts, connections, and examples. Next up in the storyboard are similar transfer and dissimilar transfer. Transfer of learning is the process of using what you learned and applying it to a new situation. Not only the concepts, but also applying their understanding of conceptual relationships uh, to these new situations. There are two types of transfer, um, near transfer and far transfer. Near transfer is taking what we learned in one situation and applying it to another similar situation, um, also known as similar transfer. So for my storyboard, the similar transfer context I included was having students take a look at uh, tools and objects that people use in their daily lives and examine the relationship between the structures of these items and its uh, function. Another context I added was having students take a look at devices that uses sensors and computer processing. These examples show how devices have sensors within structures uh, that gain information and process the information to generate an output for a particular function. So for example, in a home light system, the light sensor detects the intensity of the light um, in the room and sends that information to the microprocessor. If the light level is low, especially when it is um, at night, the microcomputer will then signal to the lights to turn on. This is similar to what we see in animals. Um, here's an example where a cat sees a potential predator its eyes have a rounded structure that maximizes the amount of light that comes in through increased surface area, which is the function of the eye. The eyes also have uh, sense receptors that receive information, and then the brain processes that information. As a result, the cat responds to the predator that it sees. Far transfer or dissimilar transfer is the transfer of learning that is happening in a new situation that is completely different from the original situation that, where the students learn the concepts and the, uh, the conceptual relationships. As students are introduced with uh, more and more contexts, the transfer of learning should become more dissimilar, um, as well as involve more real-world scenarios, which is called real-world transfer. Real-world transfer involves students learning and applying their conceptual understanding in authentic ways. Um, involving complex challenges and presenting their work to authentic audiences. For dissimilar transfer, I started to brainstorm real-world settings that would require professionals to use the concepts of structure, function, and senses um, and their conceptual uh, relationships. I wanted to make sure that the context I gave them uh, was relevant to their our modern times and provide students the opportunity to make decisions and be creative. So here's what I came up with. Um, I introduced two new concepts, one of these being uh, biomimicry. So according to Biomimicry Institute, biomimicry is a practice that learns from and mimics the strategies found in nature to solve human design challenges and find hope along the way. So within the context of biomimicry, students got to see how the structure and function found in nature are mimicked to solve human problems. Students got to see how engineers built gecko-inspired adhesives to climb walls, a new paint for homes that uh, creates self-cleaning surfaces by mimicking the microstructures of, of a lotus plant, and a painless needle for shots that mimics the way the mosquito sucks the blood from our bodies, even showing a Vox video of how a Japanese engineer used the structures of different types of birds to improve uh, the bullet trains. The other concept students learned about um, was robotics and how robotics engineers design and build prototypes that solve problems. Students got to see biomimicry examples of engineers using sensors uh, similar to the sensory receptors animals have to solve problems. For example, drones that mimic the bat's ability to use sound and echolocation so that they can navigate in the dark um, through dust and smoke. 
The goal was to have students see that these devices um, that involve the use of sensors and information processing are designed to meet our needs. Very similar to how animals use their sensory receptors in processing information uh, to help them meet their needs, specifically for survival, growth, behavior, and reproduction. Finally, for student action, uh, students have to solve a problem through the use of biomimicry and the design thinking principles and practices. They will need to mimic an animal or plant external or internal part um, and then engineer a prototype that will help solve a problem. Students also have the potential to mimic an animal's senses and information processing through the use of electric sensors to help solve the problem. The goal of this part of the storyboard is to have students transfer their understanding to a real world context uh, that gives them the opportunity to be impactful and develop into agents of change. So throughout the storyboard, you can see a gradual increase in the complexity of the learning, as well as the context. In the acquire phase, you can see it is more surface level learning where the concepts are learned individually. Then we have uh, deep learning where students get to organize the ideas into concepts and then find connections and relationships between the concepts. And then finally, we have transfer learning where you apply what you learn to a new, meaningful and relevant situation. Thank you so much for watching. Um, hope you found this video informative. I just want to thank Julie for inviting me to take her course and uh, making this video even possible. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and click the bell icon to be notified for new videos I post. Until next time, stay perpetually in beta, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.